Jim Broadbent is here. 2001 will likely go down as a milestone year for him. He began it in the blockbuster Bridget Jones' Diary. He followed with the role of the cabaret impresario in Moulin Rouge, earning him a British Academy Award last month for Best Supporting Actor. Finally, there was Iris for his performance as John Bailey, the man behind Arthur Iris Murdoch. He is nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. He's already won the Golden Globe and has been honored by the National Board of Review and the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. I'm pleased to have him here at this table for the very first time. Welcome. Thank you very much. The yeah. life of a character actor, uh, which I assume you proudly love being yeah. called. Yeah, it's, it's a choice. <laughs> it's a choice, exactly. Uh, is its longevity, if you're mm -hmm. good. Yeah. What are the other great benefits of having a life in film and on stage mm -hmm. as a character actor? Well, it's, um, I don't think I, I, I'd have it in any other way because I have a very low boredom threshold and I'm just yeah. always looking for something I haven't done before. And it's, uh, it's a sort of a function of that, really. Yeah. That I'm always trying to find things that are, are new and, yeah. and you know, genres that are new and different types of film and different types of theatre. But you work all the time. Can Not I, quite all the time. I mean, I could, I could, could, I could, I could work more than I do. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but uh, yes, I've, I haven't been uh, in touch with. I haven't been worrying about where the next job's coming from, from for, for a long, long time. Yeah. 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 There was a time when you wanted to learn to be natural in film. Yeah. Yeah. I've done a lot of theatre, um, and that was a sort of the basis of the, my career, I suppose. That every year I'd do at least one biggish theatre, and I'd do uh, film work or television work in between the theatre jobs, but I was always, I was, it annoyed me that I wasn't as comfortable with a camera, yeah. you know, a, a foot away from my face. I wasn't as comfortable as I'd like to be, and I, I wanted to be as easy with the camera as I was on stage, so I thought, I won't do theatre for a while, and yeah. I'll just get in front of a camera and get happy with it, really, which I, which I feel, I do feel quite relaxed yeah. now. As relaxed as stage, or yeah. even more so? Yeah, perhaps more so at the moment, because uh, you get a bit rusty, stage rusty, and I yeah. have to, uh, and it's uh, well, nerve-wracking as stage. It does get, yeah. Do you feel some imperative now to sort of go back to stage and make sure that you get fresh again? I'm, fe I'm feeling that at the moment. <laughs> I, I, I didn't realize until I heard that uh, um, somebody was interviewing me the other day and said, are you part of Sam Mendes' new uh, season at the Don Mar and when he's doing Uncle Vanya and yeah. Twelfth Night. I said, no. No, why not? No, I haven't heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> I realized, oh, perhaps I would like to do that stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you do anything about it? Did you call him up and say, <laughs> no, or no, call your it, agent up and say? Uh, no, I think it's, it's well down the line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when you um, set out to be an actor, hmm. what was the motivation? Well, um, I didn't have a great deal of choice at the time. At school, I was only good at art and, yeah. um, and acting. Uh, my parents were um, keen, fairly keen amateur actors, and, yeah. and, they, they, and they loved theatre. And we went yeah. to the local repertory theatre in uh, Lincolnshire uh, quite a lot. And I was yeah. always being taken to see unsuitable plays. And in fact, and in their amateur theatre, my first part on stage was in the doll's house when the children in the doll's house. So I started with Ibsen. Yes, <laughs> it's a good place to start. <laughs> and I haven't returned to him yet. Yeah. But um, so, so theatre and acting was always yeah. sort of something that was around, so I wasn't uh, intimidated by the idea of it. So I, and, and I was always volunteering at school for it. Yeah. Uh, but um, I was good at art as well, but so I went to art school for a year and I was good enough to know that I wasn't good enough then. So I went to, yeah. so then I thought, act, if I'm honest with myself, I want to act, so then I went to drama school. There's a great tradition in Britain, um, I, I don't, let me not go there because I mean, I, I may be wrong, but I was with Ian McCallum, as I said to you mm. before we sat down, mm. in his hometown. Mm. Near Manchester, and they have a little theater there. Mm. You know, do, and it's amateur theater. Yeah, you know, maybe 150 chairs or, yeah, or seats. Yeah. yeah, is that throughout England? That they it is really. Yeah, I mean, in fact, there is a small, um, a, a, like a, a converted Wesleyan chapel in in Lincolnshire called the Broadbent Theater. The Broadbent Theater. And, uh, yeah, yeah. No, but it's named, it's named after my father because he he was instrumental in setting that yeah. up, and then uh, and he was an uh, architect, and he arranged the. Um, conversion of it into a theatre and then he died so they, and they called it, looking for a name, so they called it the Broadbent. <laughs> and I'm now the president of, the, of that little amateur theatre group, but and they take touring shows, but they put on their own shows. Yeah, that, that was it. It is a tradition. It's all over, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, and this community supports it and, mm, and, and it's a yeah. great entertainment for the community. Yeah, uh, and, and it, it is, a, the amateur theatre groups, are, the amateur dramatic societies, as they're known, are a 
big thing in, in Britain, yeah. Now, you're playing someone who's alive. Mm. How do you go about that? Well, I, I, I like, first of all, I like playing, playing real people, whether yeah. alive or dead people, because uh, I find... They have some historical Yeah, place. I mean, like Gilbert in Topsy Turvy. Right, right, and, right. Uh, Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, I love... I mean, I like the complexity of real people. <laughs> and, yeah. and the, the now, does that have anything to do with the fact that you can find out about them or you can see them? I mean, Judy, for example, told me here at this table that she, you know, she saw these interviews that Iris Murdoch had mm. given, mm. or at least three or four of them. Mm. You, do you, did you talk to John Bailey? No, I didn't talk to him because I was, I was working, I was in Italy working when, um, w w for the months preceding the yeah. actual filming, so I wasn't able to talk to him. But I did, uh, there was one radio interview he did with, it's called In the Psychiatrist's Chair. Oh, I've heard about it, this. It does yeah. in there. I've heard about this. And, uh, and this is where Professor Anthony Clare, the yeah. psychiatrist, probes into the psyches of well-known people, and John Bailey was one of them. And that couldn't get any better research material. Talking you, about who he is. And talking about who he is, talking about his relationship yeah. with Iris, talking about his family, and talking about his uh, everything, and his, uh, and his neuroses. And what, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's, it was... I mean, it's just a godsend, really. Yeah. And he's so, his manner of speaking is so particular. <laughs> There's a, it's a, a very light, light stammer and all that, <laughs> that area. I mean, that was irresistible to, to a character just, director. To, you, yeah, just, move, might, just to go with it. Just to go with it. And, we, and, it's, I mean, it, and all that is very informative about, I mean, how he speaks and the, the tempo and the lightness is all, it all adds up to the character. Take a look at this. This is where you're helping Iris, played by Judy Dench, remember mm. that she is, in fact, an author. I wrote novels. Wonderful novels. I wrote such things you wrote. Special things. Secret things. What do you think? She's wonderful, isn't she? Yeah. Now, is that what you were thinking? She's wonderful. Or, no, were you criticizing yourself at all? Were you thinking anything? I would have done this differently. Or? And, uh, and then I was just, I was just looking at her, and I was rem reminded because my my mother died from Alzheimer's in 1995, and I was just so reminded, and particularly in that scene, just of the, the gentleness and the um, the little struggle to remember and find yeah. the the words, and it, it was. It's actually terribly easy to act with, <laughs> Judy. When somebody would have said it must be hard acting with Judy because you, you know, she's so brilliant, and you have to work twice as hard to keep up with her, you know. But no. actually, I mean, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's exactly she's, the she's opposite. She's so real; it makes it easy, and you just have you go with it, and you yeah. you enter the scene as well. And and probably elevates all who work with someone. Mm. People who work with you would say the same thing. You know, you, you're elevated by working with people who are really good, whether it's playing sports yeah. or acting mm. or doing anything. Mm. And uh, I mean, in part of getting that is the fact that it's easy and it you you're not struggling and you're not fighting to to mm -hmm. do what you're doing. At this stage in your life mm -hmm. and career, are you are you learning anything about acting, or are you simply it is the experience of doing it that, mm -hmm. and and the experience of living. I think. Um, I think you're you're always always learning things about acting. I mean, that's a I mean, and the experience of doing it yeah, and living. Right, I mean, that's right. all part of it. But I mean, particularly, I mean, it's it's hard to pinpoint it with film because you you do it that day and yeah. it's gone, and you right. you think what, what might I have done or did I uh, was I um, did I miss an opportunity or did yeah. I overdo it or whatever. But if you're doing theatre, you always learn with it. I mean, yeah. just the timing of a joke and getting a laugh is. The, limitless yeah. I, I <laughs> infinite interest yeah. and difficulty yeah it, it, but i would think this would be amazing if you so you have a good night and you've got perfect timing mm, mm. and the laugh is there mm. whether you can duplicate that next night it, can it, you it, come to that moment it's the next the, night well that, that is the you you can't <laughs> yeah. was, as soon as you think like that you can't and you have to work out how to do it and you have to forget the the, the laugh you got but you somehow remember try and remember where you were coming from when you got it. Yeah, it's, right, right. It just goes on forever, and, it, and, it, and you, never, you never grasp it. And, it. and it's probably not your fault, probably just the audience. That night, that they one, they one person who had a big, loud laugh and got a particular... Yeah. But you can be moved and energized by an audience. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's hugely stimulated, yes, and a good one. And, 
And then you sit in that mirror. Look at that when you, when you what start does a good director do for you? Good director, um, all the good directors that I really like, like what actors bring to the table. That's the, the main the thing. And they, but all good directors like what actors bring to the table. Yeah. If you have a good director, they'll appreciate what the actor yeah. can do. Mm. Yeah, and en enjoy act. I mean, I, yeah. when you're, I love it when you're rehearsing and, it's a, and you see the, the director with his fist in his mouth trying not to laugh because he's got to go through and, and, and then you th think, yeah. uh, and that is so stimulating to, <laughs> if it's comedy, <laughs> yeah. but um, it, that's what is, and all, I mean, like, Woody Allen, Mike Lee, Richard. Yeah, Mike Lee is the other great partnership mm. you've had. Yeah, I mean, they, they love actors. They, they, they get, give a lot, of, a lot of responsibility to the actors to, to share in the whole creative process. And it's not just um, read the script and do, and do, do it as I want way. you to do it. Right, it's a collaboration. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about Mike Lee and that collaboration mm. for you. Yeah, that's, uh, I suppose that is most important. I mean, 1979, we yeah. first... I uh, worked with him in, on stage. I did two stage plays with him in at the Hampstead Theatre Club in London, and small. Um, one in '79, and the next one in '81. Um, and it's, I mean, that, that is such a particular way of working. I mean, and we, I think we've. It's part, partly what. Uh, drives him uh, or stimulated him when he started was he, because he was at art, he had been to art school and then he was at, at RADA and then he went to film school and he realized that there was a the acuteness of observation that he had when he was at art school and you know, figure drawing and, and all the artists would do and they'd look so carefully at what they were trying to depict was it didn't happen at with the actors at, at RADA at that time it was a generalized thing that the actors would put across. So he's always liked um, a lot of, an awful lot of the actors he uses have had, have some sort of art, yeah. art background and artistic talent in some way. Because it, uh, there's a, an observation that goes with that. And I think he, I enjoy that in him, and that he, that he um, asks for that precision in uh, observing characters. And, um, and he likes, I think, that what you know, we bring. Yeah. Take a look at this. This is another scene in which you tell Iris that he, Jim Bailey, cannot speak the language of love. You know, it's all around us, people like you and me talking nonsense. Oh, I know, I know. So to listen, that's the job. You call it a job, but it's like music, what you do. You live with the angels, speak their language, the music of the spheres. Nowadays, the only language anyone really understands is pictures. Love's the only language everyone understands. Who love, yes. I can read it, but I can't speak it. <laughs> Judy makes it fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Moulin Rouge. Mm. Uh, tell me about that performance as the impresario. Well, that is a, he was. Um, no, that was a, it, it's a different sort of job. In, I mean, apart from the fact that it's a, a, a musical, which yeah. I've never done before, I don't sing and I don't dance. <laughs> My joke is that I sing like a virgin and I dance like a farmer. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the, um, so I pointed that out to Baz Luhrmann that I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, wasn't. Yeah. Was, was, I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't good, on your skill set. I wasn't. I wasn't ideal casting. I said. Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't having it. So. Is that right? He said no. I'm, I know what I want. Yeah. And he said, and we can work on the various aspects. Of it. Yeah. So, um, but he had a. But he had a particular. Um, you know very uh, precise vision of the character he wanted and um, and to the, you know, the the facial hair the yeah, padding right, and the right. costume and 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 how it is to deliver it in a way which is fascinating to work work for and I mean he wanted a huge amount of energy brought to it and he really um, pushed and <laughs> drove us all on and we and very infectious in his enthusiasm and and it's uh, and it was, and it re really did. I you know got into areas that uh, I wouldn't have ever <laughs> imagined getting to. But like, it, uh, um, just the. I mean, I, at one point uh, I said, "This is going to be the loudest 
professional suicide note in history. (laughs) (laughs) Shouting and screaming and dancing and and more bigger and bigger. Take a look. This is you singing Madonna's Like a Virgin. Here it is. Like a virgin. Like a virgin. Much for the very first time. Looks like fun. Yeah, absolutely. That was, <laughs> that was the most fun. I mean, dancers are such fun. Yeah. They're, they're so fit and they're so energetic and so light. And yeah. they, it's a ball, but I've never, never had to work with dancers before. And the Can Can Girls in the other scene. You know, yeah. you know, all these Can Can Girls charging down the huge hall behind you. It's a, that's what yeah. I mean. It's a, <laughs> entering a yeah. quite other world for me. Mm-hmm. Quite different from Martin Scorsese, mm-hmm. who you work with in Gangs of New York. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When did you do that? That was uh, um, the winter of two, 2000. 2001. That was in Rome, just before, and I came back right, and did Rome. Iris immediately after that. Mm-hmm. So that and it. Moulin was where in there? Uh, Moulin Rouge was the uh, mi- millennium, uh, yeah. 99, 2000 in Sydney. So it was eight months in Sydney and uh, about six or seven months in Rome. Uh, you're going to go to the Academy Awards? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you immediately go to work on another film, or are you going to take a break? No, after that, no, pretty soon, and there's, uh, uh, Doug McGrath is doing a film with Nicholas Nickleby um, oh, in, in England. and uh, So I'm doing uh, Wackford Squares, the nasty schoolmaster. It's going to be a, a real treat. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fun of being a character actor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The different, and you know. Mm, yeah, 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 there's so many more interesting roles. Mm, well, when and, there's and, a, and you don't have to live up to an image of something. Yeah, there's, but there's a, a great um, anarchic theatre director I worked with, with Ken Campbell, um, and somebody, I was offered a part uh, it was, uh, by another director, so, and they said to said to Ken, oh, I'm a bit worried about this part, Ken. It's a bit straight. And Ken said, there are no straight parts, there are only straight actors. <laughs> <laughs> which, is a, which is quite true. I mean, if, yeah. you, if, you, if it's a well-written part, it's not straight. Yeah. <laughs> and, there's, and it's, there's, no. and however, and I think if it's a well-written, there's humor in every, yeah. every character. You can some, find it. In some way. It's well-written. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Jim, thank you for coming. It's, it's great pleasure. to have you on this program. Oh, thank it you really very much. Is. It's been delightful. Much success at the Academy Awards and all these other things, which... Uh, reward